Welcome to the NBA Show Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Franzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Everyone likes pony life, therefore I hate it. No, wait, they hate it, therefore I like it. Mm, I, I don't know how to respond to that, because if everybody likes it, but you hate it, but if everybody hates it, how, how? Because I'm a free thinker. I don't let the opinions of others define me. As long as, you know, they they like it, I have to hate it. Because I'm a free thinker. Oh, oh so, wait, that's, a, this, that's the perfect definition of a hipster. Congratulations. Maybe now I can drop this absurd accent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review uh, My Little Pony, Pony Life, episode season 1, episode 3. How Applejack got her head back. Oh boy, this is going to be a doozy. In this episode, Applejack finds herself in the midst of an identity crisis where her signature head becomes a citywide fashion craze. So she joins a group of alternative ponies in the hopes of finding a new style to replace her old look. So, before we head into the review, first impressions are in order. So Silver, what do you think? Truth be told, I wasn't sure what to make of this episode at first, because up until this point in Pony Life, mostly she was known for stealing Pinky's fourth wall bit. She talks to the camera directly, and that was it. So now getting to see her wrestle with something, getting to see her uh, have this identity crisis, it's a bit more fun. But I think the big thing for this episode is that it finally gave the potions a central focus in a good way, and that's no small thing. Mostly because up until now, they've just been sort of sidelined, and yet they were one of the chief advertisements for this uh, show. In fact, they were part of the ad- they were part of the toys. So it's like, okay, what's the big deal with these here potions? Lo and behold, here we go. It's also interesting to note that the uh, hipster ponies, they dress like goths, but I feel like their mentality is more hipster. Hot on the heels of both, uh, what was it, Bubbles and Dishwater Slog, these guys aren't that bad. They're not malicious. They're just hipsters. <laughs> yeah, a hipster set. Yeah, but but um, I I don't know. Uh, maybe there's an issue with them because their names are Derek, Matt, and Matt. <laughs> well, you know what happens when you ha- when they take a painting? What? A Matt painting. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. But no, um. It's funny because they even highlighted in the episode where, oh, we're trying to be diff- we're, we're different because we have names. <laughs> I mean, it's different. Yeah, totally different. <laughs> but they somehow managed to earn repeat appearances. Oh, really now? Ye. Much later on when uh, Fluttershy is trying to sell the most cookies. Oh. So we'll get to that eventually, I guess. All right, then. And as for me... This episode was um, how how it was. It was not bad. It was really interesting to see that. Well, I'll just say this: it was really interesting to see that they are tackling a really not so easy topic to discuss or tell. Uh, identity crisis is one of those things where it's not easy to deal with. Uh, done wrong, it could spell disaster. Done right, it would be magnificent. Um, it's one of those cases where if you have this really strong character who is defined by his personality and attitude, suddenly you rip that away from them and they have this huge identity crisis that they need to deal with. Yeah, it was. it, it can work. Um, a good example is from Robin to Nightwing don't want to be in the shadow of Batman, uh, start his own, uh, create his own identity, Create uh, went into a new town, and blah, 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 and so on. I mean, uh, if done right, it can do wonders. If done wrong, ay, ay, ay. But yeah, um, let's head right into it. So if you guys at home have not watched this yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the show. So, we start off the episode with um, our hero, Applejack, in a beret, playing with a cube, telling the story about how she lost her identity. 
Now, if only that beret had been raspberry colored, I could have had a song promo. Wow. <laughs> what do you have? Have you never? Uh, I believe it's a Prince song. Raspberry beret. <laughs> the kind you find in a secondhand store. We're going to get a copyright claim. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> but anywho, yes. Um, we, we get into a flashback where Applejack is telling her story about how Rarity came in with a Stetson. And it's the talk of the town. And Applejack is Applejack approved because, hey, my Stetson, that's kind of the end thing. Yay, that's really good. And then suddenly, every pony else follows through. We got Rainbow Dash, Twilight, Fluttershy doing the whole Stetson thing. And except for Pinkie Pie. Pinkie Pie just got a chef's hat. Yay, good on her. And Applejack is feeling down. Oh no, um, that's not cool. Um, I, I don't feel special anymore because everybody else is using what I'm using. Oh no, my individuality is challenged. So she sits down at the counter and, well, you know, talks to Pinkie Pie about it. And Pinkie Pie just says, you know what? You need a new... Uh, change a new style why don't you try stuff here try this potion it can work wonders for you and potion develops hat wait what it's an alternate reality potion it lets you trip really high which means it's full of the good stuff uh, okay and i'm going should i continue with the hats or posture for retrospective why don't we do a little retrospective all right then so Zilla, what do you think one, I question why Rarity is uh, is suddenly mirroring Applejack's uh, style. I mean, she's always added her own flair. This is her just flat out and out copying someone else. Like, Rarity, your, your lack of originality shocks me. Shocks and appalls. <laughs> so, but it reminds me of that line from The Incredibles. When everyone is special, no one is. When everyone has this really awesome style, no one has a really unique style. So I can understand Applejack. Applejack feeling a little uh, loss of individuality as the group mim it mimics her. But it is also a little disappointing that they're putting all her identity in a hat. I mean, call me crazy, but the Applejack in Friendship is Magic that I celebrate was more about being a caring family member, loyal, steadfast friend, stubborn, but with a strong sense of community. And ultimately, the even keel that could pull others back from the brink, which was where a lot of the entertainment lay. For the record, when Applejack episodes often struggle because the writers would try to make her the unreasonable one, when really she's at her best when you put her in an unreasonable situation and see how she'll react. Oh, true that, true that. And yeah, Applejack here oh. has always been... <laughs> Uh, Sorry, got to dock you. All right. But anyway, um, Applejack has always been the pillar of the main six. She has been there to anchor everybody down, to ground them. Uh, not grounded, but just uh, make them humble. Yeah, Applejack has always been one of those strong characters. And her Stetson is part of her identity. Yes, that is true. But that doesn't define her. What defines her is her honesty and her high-strung attitude? Yes, no? I don't know about being high-strung. She's usually pretty easygoing. It's more just when things go out of control and become incredibly impractical. That's when she starts, to, she starts to struggle. She's in a zone of power when she's in her community and knows everyone and can, in many ways dictates the emotions of the town. She's the heart of Ponyville. And yet, when the town starts going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, suddenly she's losing her connection with her surroundings. That's why I especially I love a My Little Pony comic where she has to go to City Hall and try to navigate it. Oh, yeah, that and one. basically just goes insane. But I'm doing this a disservice. I mean, this is pony life, not friendship is magic. It's going to have different takes and in, and in some ways different characters, even if they have the same name. Uh, true, true. That's one way to look at it. And yeah, um, point, uh, the sorry, the episode here right now, uh, with how it's going, it's really interesting to see Applejack in this light. Uh, 
would I say that this is a good change? Or I wouldn't say good change, but I, it's an interesting view of the character. One of the few things I noticed that she's not doing the whole fourth wall breaking gimmick in this one. Is it? Well, she is talking directly to the audience during her flashbacks. Uh, man, with the advertising, I saw the fire truck scene dozens of times. It just kept coming up. Uh, so, so she is in some ways talking to them, but she's also uh, while experiencing something. Yeah, but then she also talks. She also talks to the audience when she's uh, helping herself to some more cake. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, minor, then not not blatant, but it kind of fits for the episode. But anywho, let's get back to it. So Applejack here tries one of the potions and it gives her sorry, it gives her a aviator cap with the goggles and whatnot and she imagines she, she imagines herself flying an aeroplane. An aeroplane, mind you <laughs> Well, I mean let's let's be honest, Pony Life does rely more on technology than others. True, true. Oh man. It's one of those things where I cannot get used to it. Like, uh, <laughs> okay, um, another pause here because here's the thing. Uh, when I read fan fictions and whatnot, they try so hard not to break the rules of engagement or the rules of the universe and what the rule, sorry, and what the universe is giving them. Uh, when I mean universe, I mean the show's canon because okay uh we've been shown that yes they have um big screen tvs they have arcades they have video games and whatnot but we don't really know how they work so the fanfic writers don't really push beyond that like they don't really highlight it just to avoid things like oh um they travel via aeroplane or whatever it is or even uh created a truck and whatnot no 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 they, they don't they don't really touch upon those kind of things so when you read the story you feel somewhat pulled in and the universe is believable even though this is fanfic but this here right now that's throwing everything out the window and it feels like you can almost do anything, which is not a bad thing, but oh my. It's true that in My Little Pony, they, they, well, technology in Equestria is very schizophrenic. You have Manhattan, which has big screen TVs that light up the whole evening. And then you have Ponyville, which does, which has arcade games, but as far as we know, no home televisions. There's theaters, but no home TVs. And so it's all, it's all over the place. You can you can have uh, steampunk based carts like Flim and Flam Super uh, Speedy Sire Squeezy Six Thousand, and you can and you can have everyone just riding on a cart, or sailing on a on a old style galleon. So it's all over the place. Pony life is more grounded in modern day tech. Everyone's using tablets. They're running reality shows. They're, they let social media make a lot of the decisions for them. So again, it's two. It may be similar characters, but it's a whole different setting. It's a whole different dynamic. That's why it's not always fair to compare the two. However, I will also point out that while the show uh, didn't go for much high end tech, uh, My Little Pony comics did. Uh, let's see here. I believe it was a Friends Forever with Rarity and Applejack doing the cross country. Mm. They actually get into a uh, what? What was it? A kind of helicopter plane hybrid. Ah, uh, yes, one of those things. Okay. And during uh, the Cosmos arc, they had airplanes. It's just that the, instead of engines, the planes were strapped to Pegasi. <laughs> uh, Not all that different from the original Friendship Express, pulled by five or. Five stallions. Uh, that was before until they put in steam and the coal engine and whatever. Oh, man. That's before the Friendship Express got Toyotified. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Like, it's it's really confusing. Like, like, in the earlier seasons of Ponies, they're trying to 
find their identity. Once they got it, they are they're mostly solid, set in stone and whatnot. But oh man, let, let's carry on. Let, let's just blame Sunset on this, yay? Blame Sunset? Yeah, she's the one that introduced all the technology. <laughs> ah, uh, blame her. <laughs> so anywho. After not working with the aviator cap, Pinkie Pie gives another potion and it gives her a fireman's hat. And she like it until Rainbow Dash's <laughs> Rainbow Dash burns her. And yay, um that's not great for Applejack and Applejack tries to be an astronaut, but nah, it doesn't work for her. It never works when you take off your helmet in a vacuum. Mm, true that. I mean, that just sucks. <laughs> I see what you did there. Uh, but anywho, Applejack tries one last potion and it gives her a black beret. And the beret kind of gives her an identity crisis. And yay, um, with that, she walks away trying to figure things out. Uh, well, that's the end of part one. And I don't think so. We need to go on with part two. Sorry, um, the recap of part one because we kind of already did. It's the same thing. Uh, let's hit into part two. And I have to say something. The marquee for part two is awesome. <laughs> we haven't really been touching on the parts art, like the... Uh, preview for oh no, what was the preview? It's the marquee for the episode title, and this one I just have to point out because it's just showing a real horse, except it has Applejack's mane, and it has an outline of a Stetson, and a single tear rolling down its cheek. I know it's like what? <laughs> oh man. But anywho, Applejack sits in the park, um, lamenting, mo- mo- moping and whatnot, until three ponies come along and, well, kind of say that she is cool and would you like to join us? We're hipsters. I'm Derek and this is Matt and that's also Matt. We have names. We are trying to be unique. And Applejack joins them. And joins them she did. Because, wow, Applejack here is... Well, she jumped in the bandwagon pretty fast. Pretty interesting, really. So what do you think, Silva? Everyone's jumping on a a trend really fast. I mean, everyone jumps on the Stetson really quick. And then she jumps hipster really quick. That's because, what, this whole thing... With two parts, it's still only about 15 minutes, isn't it? Eleven. Eleven, even less. Yeah, these things go at a breakneck speed. I know. And what, we're reviewing this even longer than the show is? Eh, typically, yes. Yeah, but if you really think about our track record, uh, 20, 25, 26 minute episode, about half an hour to 40 minutes. 11 minutes show, 40 minute review, what? <laughs> yes, we're terribly inefficient. I know. But you were saying, Silva? Well, just that everyone jumped on the bad wagon really fast. So, of course, Applejack is going to go through her identity crisis rather quickly, too. In fact, the potion specifically gave her that hat uh, to say, how do you reflect having an identity crisis? Oh, beret. (laughs) Which makes me wonder why Rarity isn't uh, clamoring for these potions. Like, you could make a whole fashion line based on people's emotions just by having them drink that. You You got fashion in a bottle. Merchandise it. You're like Piccolo with his clothes beam. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, that. Oh, that's a thing. I forgot. <laughs> oh, my God. Dragon Ball, you so cocoa for cocoa. You're so cuckoo for cocoa puffs. Oh, my God. But anywho, shall we carry on? We shall. All righty then. So, Derek, Matt, and Matt introduce Applejack to a new trend. And said trend is cubes with faces and whatnot. 
Apple Tech asks, what do this thing do? And they don't have the slightest clue. It's cool looking and nobody really knows what it is. So we got to be first in line to kind of get into it. So Applejack hangs out at Sugar Cube Corner and being all hipsterish and whatnot. And Rarity walks up and says, yo, darling, um, what's up with the beret? Uh, where's your stats and whatnot? And Applejack just says, uh, I'm trying to do something new, trying my new look and whatnot. And I'm into this cube thingy. This cube thingy is awesome. Rarity asks, what does it do? There's no answer. So Rarity says, you know what? Uh, Can I borrow this for a bit? Yay. Thank you, darling. So the next day happens. And Applejack just says, you know what? Fudge this. I want to use my Stetson. And I don't care whoever follows it. Uh, I'm the original. Yay, Iha. So she heads to Sugar Cube Corner and everybody's playing with something new. And that is the cube with faces. She's shocked by this and asks what happened to all these Stetson. And we have a short clip of Gummy chewing on Stetsons. Oh, wow, we. Gummy's even more of an oddball in this show. Gummy, yeah. Gummy has more personality here. Like, in the previous episodes, he is more of a philosopher. In this one, yeah, he's comedian, I think. Actually, I think he's more of a nihilist. Every everything, He's more Squidward. He's going around like, do you believe what I've got to deal with here? <laughs> Seriously. Why do I hang out with these ponies? Why? <laughs> uh, because you have... I got no idea why. But anywho. Oh, um, Applejack says what's up. And Rarity comes in saying that... Uh, Yo, darling. Um, I'm responsible for this. Because, well... I kind of roped in Twilight into... Promoting this cube magic to... Uh, make everybody forget about the Stetson trend. And now everybody's into the cube thingy, which they got no idea what they're supposed to do with it. So, with that, uh, Derek, Mark and Mark comes in and sees everybody into the cube and they say, Oh, the cube is so last season. Let's go for something new. And we want to wear tiny little tiaras, but instead of wearing on our head, we're going to wear on our flanks. I feel like they should instead be devoting their energy to finding out where that soundtrack is coming from. It follows them everywhere. <laughs> There's a, oh man, I, I don't remember the soundtrack. Is, well, what was the soundtrack again? Uh, it's, this, it's an electronic techno-ish uh, uh, piece. Ah, all right. So then. they enter They enter a room and it just starts. <laughs> Well, they have their own theme music. That's cool. But anywho, uh, they invite Apple J. And Apple J says, Nah, man, it's all good. Uh, I'm going to stay here. I have my own identity and whatnot. And yeah, see you guys later. And the crew says, You know what? You you do your own thing. We're going to go our separate ways. Bye-bye. And with that, uh, the main six kind of hang out with each other. And... Applejack, Rarity says she's sorry. She didn't mean to steal her thunder and whatnot. Like, she's. Uh, Applejack is just her muse. And yay, why not? So, with that, um, the rest of the gang sees what can we do with this? What does this thing even do? And Pinkie Pie hits it. What? Yeah, yeah, but you really should have that tested for toxins. I mean, is that safe to eat? Has this been tested by the FDA? I think not. But in who, um, Pinkie Pie says, oh, wow, this is the perfect thing for my muffin cake. What was it again? Stuff. Bakery. So this thing is perfect for what I need to add in into my pastry. And goes off doing it. And the rest of the gang eats it too. And Applejack screams at the screen saying that, wait, we could have eaten this all along. And episode ends. What? 
Well, when they say all along, this these cubes were only a thing for like the opening of part one and the last minute and a half maybe of part two. It's like, so all along, it's just like, it, we hardly knew ye co- cubes. Well, what is this? <laughs> Although I guess with the cubes, we've come full circle. Uh, true, that, that's true. Oh, boys, but still, oh, God. But anywho, uh, we've done episode end. So, Silver, what do you think? Well, like, it's a funny vignette. Mostly, I think the real appeal lies in seeing Applejack's imagination as she as she pictures each career, or that is her new identity, and then has it just literally blow up in her face or or die by asphyxiation in a vacuum. (laughs) So I think that was the most fun. The, The hipster ponies, this is what I mean when I say they're not jerks. Applejack decides to go with her Stetson, and they are just like, okay, have at it. They're not, they don't denounce her. They're not looking down on her. It is a little sad to see them give stuff up right away because it's popular. That's has a very artificial feel to it. That if you like dislike something or if your identity is disliking things that other people like just by default, then that's not the real you. That's a persona. And I'd I'd rather go for authenticity. But these guys want to do something countercultural. They want to try wearing a... what is it? Uh, crowns on their on their flanks. Okay, good luck with that. I hope you have good balance. And later on, they will be fine with wearing vomit. Oh God, there's something. Oh God. Oh God. Hey, I didn't say they were hygienic. Maybe that's part of their counterculturalism. Oh God. But well, one of the few things that I noticed that uh, Derek, Mark, and Mark. Oh God, they're really, they're memorable. God, oh God, they're memorable. But anyway, um, Derek, Mark, and Mark are not jerks. They're the first new characters that are male that are not jerks, because previously we have dishwash, dishwater, and bubbles, and they're jerks. They're, they're huge jerks, and like Maddie mentioned to us. New character are introduced, automatically they are jerks. And with this one, eh, they're not jerks. They're kind of chill. They're, they're doing their own thing, so that's something else. Anything else to add, Silva? Well, maybe a quick tirade talking about the idea of counterculturalism, because a lot of movements do gain speed because they are countercultural. They defy the norms. They shock people out of it. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, the funny thing is that often a countercultural movement, if it gains up momentum, becomes part of the culture at large. So if the goal is to defeat the culture, you usually end up getting assimilated by it. That's the that's cruel irony. But with hipsters, it's not even that it's an identity. A countercultural movement has a problem with the current culture and uh, and works in opposition to that to create something new. You know, if I don't like this, here here is the alternative. What these guys are doing is basically hopscotching and never really fleshing something out. They're just doing it to be different, which is not necessarily an identity. It's more a means that you're stuck in a loop. When you mention uh, one thing changed, this reminds me of the video game era where way back when the PlayStation was the no, sorry, Nintendo was the king of gaming. Then Sega came along trying to overthrow Nintendo, but uh, they had a pretty tight race. Then PlayStation came in, and somehow it beat out both. Xbox came into the fray, and so on, and so on, and so on. Um, right now, I'm guessing there's a split of a 50-50 um, trend where People are into the PlayStation and X-Bone. Honestly, after the, what was the Xbox One, I'm in no rush. I'll probably get a PlayStation 5 once there are some, 5. Yeah, see, they at least are consistent with their numbers. Yeah. Oh, God. It, see, they're not, be, they're not being countercultural with their numbering, thank goodness. Oh, if you want to get more confusing, like the new Xbox name is going to be the Xbox Series X. Xbox Series X. Yep. 
Are you sure you don't want to throw in one more X so that you can make it either a uh, under uh, underperforming action series or uh, a burlesque show? <laughs> oh man, I don't know. Like X, oh, the the only reason why they didn't go for Xbox Two is because at the time PlayStation Three was coming out. And they didn't want to look weak to the PlayStation, so they put in Xbox 360, which kind of backfired on them when they wanted to do the Xbox One, because what? Plus, what do they do with versions 2 through 359? I don't know. <laughs> uh, at least the Nintendo system has really good naming convention. Now, I'm sorry, we is, is, no, that's what you do in the bathroom. <laughs> I I think there's a meaning behind it in Japanese. I I don't know, but still, the Wii U was just silly. Ugh. Okay, well that's just Kung Fu Hustle. Wii U, Wii U, Wii U. Ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, well oh, man. All right. Anyway, um, are you done, Silver? Yes, I believe I am. All right. So for me, um, episode was entertaining. I. Won't say I like it. I, I just find it entertaining and fun. It was an interesting view on to Applejack's psyche, but it's not f- fully what I really want to see. You know, I would like to see Pony Life go places, like do new things, try new stuff. And by that, I mean, let's see Zakura. Let's see... Uh, Kirin, the the Kirins. Let's see some of the other characters, the other co- creatures and whatnot. Let, let's see how you go. And I do believe they have Discord, and they didn't get John Delancey on. So you know what? Let's get uh Fizzlepop in. You know, let let's see those characters that are really stupidly expensive come in here and just do stuff. I would like to see that. That would be really interesting. What do you think? The thing is, I view Pony Life as a stand-in just to keep the ride rolling until G5 comes out in whatever form it takes. twenty twenty In 2021, I believe. September, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, so literally a year from when we're recording this. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, they're coming out oh, with good. the movie first, which is interesting because... Yes. It kind of uh, emulates the original My Little Pony. How is it emulating it? Because when the original My Little Pony came out, it came, uh, it premiered in a movie sense, where everybody is introduced in the movie, and when the series came out, everybody knows who everybody is. So you don't really have to need. So you're, you don't really need that recap of who Megan is and what Megan does and why is she there and so on. The funny thing is that I remember Rescue from Midnight Castle. None of the ponies in that episode, in that movie or TV special, none of them came back. Only Spike and Megan. Well, uh, th- think about that for a minute. Uh, it's Think about that. That's just a little bit of a bitter pill. True, but... At the same time, too, it's they're kind of trying to find their footing. Like, they have an idea, let's go with it, and what do people like? They don't like the original characters, the original pony, so let's roll in new ones. Or wait, we need more toys, let's roll in more toys. Let's transform and roll in more toys. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Optimus, you've got to die now. <laughs> oh. Oh, was... And with that, we've scarred a generation. Thank you. Oh, boy. Oh, hey, hey kids, watch us bring him back as a zombie to die again. Oh, my God. No. But anywho, with with G5 here, I see them emulating uh, the original. And you know what? I can't wait to see what they do because it's a new generation. It's going to be in, all in 3D. And with the advent of technology and how far... Uh, 3D animation has gone. I can't wait to see it. Because what? Uh, we, we have Miracle's Ladybug and that is uh, not bad animation. 
there's more other animated series. Uh, wait, what? Um, the what? The 2016 uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That was not bad. Well, it all de- it depends on your Ninja Turtles. I mean, there's a whole legacy there. True, true. But anyway, um, let's wrap it up. Uh, I I think I gave my point of view. I want to see more stuff, especially with more creatures. So anyway. Uh, Silver, what? Uh, hmm, should we tell the audience at home what we're gonna do, or should we keep it a surprise? Oh, let's keep it a surprise. That way, that way they can be like, "What? They're reviewing that? What?" Yeah, yep, yep, yep. So, anywho, um, next week we won't be reviewing any ponies or anime. We're gonna review something classical, something funny. Let's just say it's gonna be weird. But anywho, uh, Silver, yeah, yeah, I, I think it goes on to me because usually is the part where I'm... <laughs> wow, this is really confusing. Anyway, uh, if you guys have any questions, questions or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themissionsgmail.com. Uh, you can also reach us on the Twitters. The show Twitter account is at the Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me a bunch of places. You can find me on both Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. Uh, you can support my videos on Patreon or over at Kofi. Uh, not a lot. I don't know if a lot of people know about Kofi. Patreon is really for the videos. Kofi can be for everything else. If you've enjoyed comic book reviews, Pinkie Pie says good nights, which are on the Deviant Arts, and all that good stuff, you can throw a little change my way. Change! You got change! <laughs> uh, oops! Oops! Spoilers. Yeah. But 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 anyway, uh, yeah, folks at home do. Try coffee out. Like tro- co- coffee is a place where, uh, you can give three dollars. Is it once a one time payment or a monthly payment? I I don't really remember. It's really a one time thing. Yeah, if, if you want to support or if you just want to give some change, uh, you can do so at coffee. It's pretty interesting. Uh, the NBA show has one, but it doesn't really work out. Oh well. And you can also find me on YouTube. Do a search for After the Fact of Silver Quill. There you'll find me. And as we are back in with the comics on Wednesdays, I will post reviews and editorials on Equestria Daily. Yep. And, well, the comic hasn't been out for a while now because of the pandemic, but now it's getting back in tr- on track. And, wow, we have strong comics here because we're season 10, then Transformers. What's next, Silver? What's next? Well, I don't know. My little po- my little pony meets the humanoids. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. I mean, once you have Transformers and My Little Pony, the sky's the limit on crossovers. When you think about it, right? My Little Pony crossover with Transformers is a stretch. So now that that happened, you could have anything. My Little Pony meets G.I. Joe. My Little Pony meets Magic the Gathering. Oh my god, that will be awesome! Well, technically, My Little Pony has met Magic the Gathering. True, in a cart form. Yes! And Transformers has also met Magic the Gathering. You know what? This works. This works. <laughs> <clears throat> but, anywho, um, if you guys... Sorry. <laughs> And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stitch radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on ponyoflife.com. Links will be in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Tristan, and also myself. Black. Like, thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Goodbye is so pedestrian. Instead, I'm going to say farewell. Mm. Music is also overrated (laughs) and cultural, but whatever. So, you don't like music... So, I'm just confused with this trend. Like, what do hipsters like and don't like? Well, name something you like. I like the band that you like. Then I hate the band (laughs) that I used to like.